Do you know what your blood pressure is? Would you like to be able to record it on your smartphone or your smartwatch? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Hi, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing well. So blood pressure is one of those basic things that is missing from smartphones and smartwatches as far as I'm concerned. And so in this video, we're going to look at wearables that are already approved and available in the US. We're going to talk about products under development. We're going to look at some promising technologies. And then we're going to wrap up by talking about where things are headed. And with that, one quick disclaimer. Nobody is paying to make this video. I have no financial interest in any of the companies that we're going to talk about. I have no inside information. And with that, let's dive in. Now, this channel isn't called Tech for Health and Athletic Performance for nothing. We do care about the technologies that we're talking about. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start by looking at the technologies that can be used for non-invasive blood pressure measurement. And when we measure blood pressure, we don't measure it directly. Right? And what we do is that we measure pulse waves, and we can do it in two different ways. We can do it what we call mechanically, and we can do it optically. When we do it mechanically, we do it by applying force, uh, such as blood pressure cuffs, for instance, to restrict blood flow. And then we use sensors to understand how the pressure changes. When we do it optically, we do it by applying light, such as light emitting diodes, LEDs, shining it onto the skin and then using photodiodes to see how much light is being reflected. Now, when we use light to measure vital signs, we call, we call it photoplethysmography, PPG for short. And you can be sure that I'm going to be using the PPG abbreviation rather than the full word in the remainder of this video. PPG uses a variety of different wavelengths, including visible and invisible light. And so we talk about short wave infrared, we talk about medium wave infrared. And the way it works is that light is absorbed more by blood than by the surrounding tissue. And what that enables us to do is that it enables us to measure blood flow and blood volume by how much light is reflected back. And based on that, we can calculate, ultimately, pulse waves and blood pressure. This is what it looks like when a smartwatch shines light down onto the wrist, which is then reflected back to the diodes for processing. And this applies to blood pressure measurement as well as it applies to blood glucose measurement, heart rate, heart rate variability, alcohol, lactate, and other metabolites. What will change based on what it is that we're trying to detect is both the wavelengths and, quite frankly, the analysis, which can be quite hairy. And this is what it looks like when a smartphone shines light on the tip of a finger, which is then reflected back to the photodiodes in the phone and picked up for processing. And so, as I mentioned before, we're going to take a look at six different companies and their wearables, split evenly between those that are FDA approved and those that are still not approved and sort of more works in progress. The three that are FDA approved uh, have a watch-like form factor, but they're definitely not smart watches. They're dedicated blood pressure meters. Two of them use a mechanical approach, and one uses an optical approach. Now, the first company that we're going to talk about is Omron, which is a large Japanese company. Their device is called the Health Guard. It's a wearable that is the closest to a traditional blood pressure cuffs, because what it has is an inflatable watch band, which acts, in effect, as a blood cuff. Now, it is a little bit smartwatch-like. It has some smartwatch-like features, but it's definitely not a full-fledged smartwatch, and it's really not something that you'd want to take for a run or anything like that. Second, we're going to talk about a company called Livemetric. It's a Luxembourg-based company. They recently received FDA approval for their device, which is called Life One. It is cuffless, but it applies 
pressure. And it uses a MEMS-based sensor, which is placed over the radial artery in your wrist. Now, their approach is called applanation tonometry, which may sound like Greek, and maybe it is. Applanation means to flatten, and what they do is that they flatten the radial artery a little bit, and tonometry means to measure pressure. Tonometry is actually a well-established technique when it comes to blood pressure measurement. So what happens is that the band of the device squeezes the artery a little bit and applies constant pressure to it for as long as you're wearing it, and then the MEMS-based sensors then uh, do the measurement that they need to calculate the blood pressure. It's a, once again a dedicated blood pressure meter. It is available for purchase for hospitals in the U.S. right now, and they are looking to make it available in retail stores mid-2023. The third one is BioBeat. It's an Israeli company. They have developed a number of different devices that are focused on cardiac monitoring. Their wearable has a watch form factor, but it is definitely not a smartwatch. It's a dedicated device for capturing different heart measures. All in all, they calculate or capture 13 different cardiac measures, some of which are clearly calculated based on the derivatives from the things that they measure. Now, according, according to the FTA approval letter, they are using an optical PPG sensor with four LEDs, red and infrared, clearly with different wavelengths, to determine what are called pulse wave transit times. And their product is not available for consumers to purchase. And so the next three companies are still a little bit works in progress, and all three of them use the optical PPG technology. And so first we have Rockley Photonics. Those of you who looked at my non-invasive continuous glucose monitoring video may recognize the name. They're one of the companies that we talked about because they have developed a chip that can measure a variety of different metabolites. They're looking to measure blood pressure, obviously, since we're talking about it here, blood glucose, lactate, alcohol, heart rate, heart rate variability, SpO2, and potentially a few other things. And they're clearly using a multi-wave approach. If we look at the bottom of their device, or one of their devices, it's one of the prototype devices, we can tell that there are a number of different light sources. There is sort of green, red, and infrared PPG. And there is also a SWIR shortwave infrared emitter and receivers for both the PPG light sources and for the SWIR light. Uh, and, and that makes a lot of sense, obviously, because they're developing one single chip to capture information about a variety of different metabolites. And Rockley is an Apple supplier. They also would like to do business with a number of other companies that are making smartwatches and smartphones. And so it will be interesting to see how that progresses. Rockley recently updated their uh, launch and commercial and testing schedules and released it publicly. And so it's probably worthwhile for us to take a look at it. And it now looks like some of their deadlines have slipped a little bit. They're talking about uh, their blood pressure measurement capability being released and commercially available in the second half of 2024 and the glucose one in Q1 of 2025, which is once again a little further out than we were hoping for. So we'll see what that means because obviously that doesn't mean that it will be immediately available on say Apple or Garmin or Chorus or Android devices. That probably depends both on the commercial arrangements of course and on those respective companies' product life cycles. Next, we have a Swiss company. It's called Actia with two eyes. Their wearable is a slim bracelet that also uses PPG technology comprised of green LEDs, and they collect the data to conduct pulse wave analysis. 
They recently obtained the CE approval, which is sort of the equivalent of an FDA approval in Europe. And so they're marketing their bracelet in a number of European countries. They have been conducting clinical trials during 2022 here in Boston at Brigham and Women's Hospital, clearly with the intent of submitting that data and hopefully getting it approved either during 2022 or to 2023. So good luck to them with that. And the third and last company that we're going to look at is another Swiss company called Biospectra. They too are using PPG technology to collect data for pulse wave analysis, but they are doing it on smartphones. Their Android phone app is now in beta, and their iPhone smartphone app is in alpha. The published results that they've released so far look good, so good luck to them. And they also are working on a freestanding little pod for people who may find it more convenient to use a pod rather than a smartphone. So where does that leave us? Well, I think we're almost there. I think the PPG technology has proven itself, as shown by the fact that BioBeat has an FDA-approved device, Actia has a device that's approved in Europe. Now I think it's really up to the big guys, like the Apples and the Googles and the Garments and the Polars and Chorus and others like them to take this technology and incorporate it into their devices, smartphones and smartwatches. We also, of course, even before that happens, get some freestanding devices to just measure blood pressure in the U.S., as, as we just talked about. Now, as someone who works with innovators and entrepreneurs, on the one hand, I'm actually very excited that the progress here is being made by smaller companies, like the companies that we just talked about. But on the other hand, I'm actually very disappointed that the Apples and the Google Verilis and the Garments haven't made more progress because when you think about it, those companies have tremendous amount of resources. So you'd think if this was important to them, they'd be working on it and they would have produced something, but uh, you know, doesn't look like it. So in any event, I'm actually very encouraged and very excited about what these six companies are doing and in particular the last three that we've talked about and the things that they're gonna bring to market. There are also some other companies that, are, that haven't publicly released what they're doing, they're also working on some exciting good things. So that's another source of potential innovation that might bring both technology and devices to us, which is very exciting. So with that, I hope you found this useful, entertaining, informative. And as always, please give me your feedback. Don't be shy about clicking the like button and subscribing. It's free. And I hope you all stay well. So be well and take good care. Bye-bye.